Is he alright to put the phone the film on? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Because uh, uh, I haven't come to motoring college. Uh, <coughs> there was a lack of uh, Were well, you at GTA Motors? Yes. Oh, are you with Neil, Neil Johnson? Johnson yeah. Oh, say hello, will okay. you, John? It's Katina. Okay. Yeah, and uh, what we've been doing is there's a uh, lack of uh, women that want to join the motor trainers. The, the girls that we do have uh, are doing uh, like role plays and going around colleges saying that they've joined and it's good and they sort of get for a, a woman to take do that sort of career and it's for everyone. And uh, that's, that's really good. Is it working? Yeah. Uh, this year, is when everyone joined, we, we had the biggest amount of uh, girls joining the group. It, it, you can see in the classrooms, there's more and more girls coming in. It's not, it's not just all, all male now, it's, it's a bit more mixed. And it's good, it's, uh, I think things like that you need for, for people to get involved with different uh, diversity of people. You need uh, that different diversity to go out and say, look, I do it, and you can do it. And it's peer-to-peer, -peer, passing it on. Works. And is the business good at supporting that? Uh, are they modelling it well for yeah, you? Um, I think, I think they are. The, the company I work for are, are uh, interested in trying to get uh, female into the into the workshop environment. And everyone seems to be on board and wanting to get everyone on board. It's good. So, any other examples or ideas or things you'd like to see change that would make it more inclusive or make it okay for other protected groups? One thing I do know that is, as a woman in the motor trade, I do get a lot of stigma on it. What yeah. kind of things? Just why you're doing it, you shouldn't be doing it, you're all in the usual stuff. So instead of, oh it's great you're doing yeah. it, it's really making a difference. Yeah. And how could that change? Um, change my people's attitudes really, because a lot of it I've been told that I can't do it because I'm not strong enough to do it. Oh physically? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's so it's like they want a strong arm challenge or yeah. something with you, do they? Okay. And who could help change that or how could the people who run apprenticeships change it? What would they have to do? I think it is just a change of attitude that it needs to be across the board. Because my tutors are actually really good, but getting out to companies is where I find the problem. And what would work when you go out to companies to make the difference? Well, I don't know, but it is a problem. And what about things like um, apprentices who are disabled or apprentices who have a particular faith that's part of their kind of, you know, who they are at work? open about that. Does that come up as an issue or? Um, as, a, as apprentices, um, I mean, where, where I used to work, just, there wasn't any disabled access at all and we just, and not many much access for women either. So I think as apprentices, you, you just let you go in there, you're starting off with a career, you just kind of want to keep your mouth shut. I think that's just really quite a problem for the apprentices, you don't really have that opportunity to um, so where are you going to get your voice from then? Yeah, to say it's an interesting about question, it? I suppose. Um, it's difficult in the workplace to yeah. get your voice across. There's nowhere to uh, it's a voice, uh, let your voice be heard. There's no... So at colleges, you, have, you learn a voice in the student councils. In the workplace, you don't have such thing. So what are you doing here now as a group with Ben and Pete that might change that or make that better? Or? I think we make people, um, just in general, um, especially anyway, it's more aware of so what would your message be to NUS then? So I was saying before, like, if we knew we were all coming today, we'd try and get some uh, things in for the conference. Yeah. Um, it was like, I was saying if we had one, like, we'd call it, we are here, because like, clearly we are here. And you haven't felt like you're here no. particularly, There's okay. not been anything to do with apprentices in the conference. That's good. So um, who are you going to be able to lobby about that then? <clears throat> I heard that Tony had been re-elected, so maybe she'd yeah. be a good champion to start yeah, with. And yeah. Okay, good. That was a plus. <laughs> Did you plant that, Peter? <laughs> I think a lot of, a lot of um, candidates have been mentioning apprenticeships, but they've done actually have any experience, and I think it's going to be very difficult for the society to, the members of the society, or potential members of the society, to get into elected positions on any seats. I mean, I've tried that, and um, I think it's... Um, yeah, we're going to, uh, that needs to happen though. Yeah, okay, so how, do you, how are you going to do that? What do you need to be able to do it? Well, how could we all support you to do that? How could your organisations and training providers make help that happen? Uh, get the training providers, training providers to join the NSA, the National Society of Apprentices, get everyone on board and spread the word about apprentices and the apprentice association. So uh, people, everyone knows more about it. And then people who go to uh, from NUS understand more what, what it's like to be an apprentice, what the challenges apprentices have compared to people maybe in college or university. 
And do you think there are any different equalities barriers for apprentices compared to, say, students at college? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. What, what OK, so you're all nodding. What would they be? Uh, I think we are really forgotten about, it's like what Nathan said, that we would have a conference that said we are here. Um, people don't understand the apprenticeships, they don't understand the pay that we get, they don't understand the training that we get as well. So I think that would be... So you need a chance to be able yeah, to share that yeah. and make that really when, visible. When people ask me about apprenticeships, I'll tell them how apprenticeships are and how bad it is, and they're all just gobsmacked, they're like, they're like really? So you need a chance to keep telling that in a kind of really public way. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what kind of? Uh, yesterday, there was someone uh, at the VP Centre, and she was saying, um, "Well, you know, as students, you know, we, we have loans and we struggle. And actually, we're working as well. We're actually earning money, but it's not much money. Yeah, not enough. So, like, so you're going on about the minimum wage." We're actually not getting it. Yeah. Um, it's like, well, we're working 40 hours, well, I suppose 32 hours a week, and we're going today in college, and we're doing stuff on top of that to yeah. subsidise us and the college jobs. And that is quite something to balance. Um, I don't think many people, students generally, with, with other students who aren't apprentices, realise that. And do you think all the staff in the sector realise that? You know, people in. No. Because I, I think that's part of it as well, isn't it? That, We've got apprentices, but maybe people don't quite realise what that means for you as, yeah. as learners, really. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so one of the things the organisation that's asked us to do this consultation when we go around colleges and um, work-based learning providers and things like that, and the network that Neil runs um, with Alex Bankers, and um, we've been asking them really, what could we do in terms of helping develop the workforce that trains you? to enable them to kind of improve things for you, particularly from an equality perspective. Any thoughts about that? You know, what, what extra training should we be giving that workforce so that they can understand what you're doing better or argue your case better? Or Firstly, as soon as you've got to work very aim and apprentice or in Ireland, so it's completely different from one of us here. Is it better or...? It's a lot worse. Okay, in what way? Well, here you get the minimum wage, in Northern Ireland you don't. So what do you get? I don't know if I want to know the answer to this. 60, 60 pound a week, and you work uh, on Monday, I work uh, Monday, Tuesday in college, which is 9 to 5, and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays, which is 8 to 5. I get 66 pounds a week in the college, and I get paid to 30 pounds by my work placement those days. And when you're in the work, you're not treated like an apprentice, you're sort of treated like someone's just forced in there. You're not really, they don't really want to teach you anything, they, they just want you to do work. Basically, just work really cheaply. Okay, there's a few of you nodding about that thing. Okay, and you're nodding quite well, a lot. We, we had a learner voice a couple of weeks ago, okay. and Nathan was a learner rep at that with his own peers from TNT Post. Um, and it came out quite alarming, didn't it? But um, we almost feel a little bit, well, the, the, the voice that was coming was, um, we almost feel a little bit different than everybody else. But then the, someone said, the normal staff. And I went, oh, mm. I've got you normal staff. And they said, well, we, you know, people think differently because we're apprentices. And we almost don't want that label, and I thought that was really quite, quite sad. So it's about training the employers and training the people that work with we all with work them. together, isn't it? Yeah. It's about training everybody inclusivity, isn't it? To have that better yeah. understanding. Yeah. And you're talking about then some double barriers, aren't you? Yeah. That there's the barrier of being an apprentice, and then if you have any other yeah. kind of difference or you know part of your identity that you can't find an expression for, or that there's kind of um, some stigma yeah. around, then that's kind of so you were describing around being a woman then it makes that harder too. And, and the, the person we spoke to said, actually, it might be in my head. I, she's you know, got no evidence of that, there's certainly no bullying or uh, you know, anything like that. It was just a case of it might be her interpretation right. that she feels different. I don't know. Okay. But that's harder sometimes yeah. to deal with, isn't it? When it's, you, know, you can't quite get a handle on it and it's not overt, then that makes it a bit more difficult for you, perhaps, doesn't it? Mm, okay, excellent. Anybody got anything else they want to suggest that we tell the ETF they need to do? The Education and Training Foundation was set up last August and its job is workforce development for the whole sector, so all of the work-based learning providers and apprenticeship providers and colleges and adult community learning. And they're really looking to consult and know really where important diversity belongs in that. Um, and what it looks like for, you know, and in particular what it looks like for apprentices and whether that's different to the voice that they have heard, both from 
teaching staff and also from learners because there is that there is that gap sometimes between those of us who are teachers what we think it's about and what your lives experience is like and often you're the richest resource for getting change but we need to work out how we help you to make that change happen really and it sounds like that's what you're trying to do here at NUS as well isn't it really so you're not only trying to change the employers and your providers but also the NUS as well is that, is that nationwide is that in Scotland? No, it just covers England. Mm. So different arrangements for the other countries. But I think the same, you know, policy concern that the workforce is well prepared. But the degree to which it, you know, takes place is not joined up across the whole. You know. <clears throat> so that is a kind of bit of an issue. Anything I've forgotten, Peter or Ben? A busy chat. <laughs> Anything I've forgotten to ask about that's come up as an issue in the discussions around equalities? Not really. Yeah, yeah. Sort of Francis and the student union had sort of, sort of like we're forgotten about in the student union. I'm the only one from South West Colleges here. So you're it. Yeah, I'm it. Okay, you're representing the whole of Northern Ireland here. Okay, really pleased to meet you. Yeah, Wales. Okay. So if there's anyone there. Oh, you are. So oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. I read it. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I did see. I did see. All so there's also something about a way to join up regionally or something, yeah. so that you can kind of share those different experiences by the you sound of it as well. You can have this one mechanic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, are you enjoying this experience here? You've been here for the whole time. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And was it a first in Liverpool for some of you as well? Yeah. Has that been all right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's quite good. Okay, and anything else you wanted to know from us? Um, I do, it's not what I wanted to know, but just a, a, an idea to comment that you're talking about equality and diversity and stuff. I think it would be really good for you to actually go to training providers and companies that have got really good equality and diversity. I'm being a bit biased, but who I'm with, they're amazing. Okay, in what way are they amazing? Tell us how they're amazing. Because the, the equality and diversity, is, I've never had any problems with them, whereas in the past with other people I have. And it's just the way that they treat you as a normal person, not as an apprentice. And the same with my company as well that I work with. I think it would be really good for you to learn what they do as well. Okay, and use that as an example yeah. to share with other yeah. people. So can we ask where you are then? <laughs> yeah, um, I work for Firstly Skills. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, Firstly Skills. You didn't pay us for skills. No. <laughs> I didn't, but I could see him looking at me like, yes! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so what is it you do? What is it you do that makes it work so well? Um, we listen. Um, I'm, I think more important than listen, we then, and it's, it is obviously the early days, we got our approval to um, the NUS only yesterday, so we're super proud of that. But listen, and actually doing something with, you know, so this is what you said, and this is what we've done. Um, and one of the suggestions that came out of your group was around um, having two reps, wasn't it, so that one can feed back to the other, you know, because, um, you know, we've got kids and we've got yeah, things going on our life, yeah. and so sometimes it might not be possible to take three days out, so if there's two of us, have a mentor, which, You've experienced that, haven't you? So we, um, Nathan and Jason, are supported by one of our learning coaches. So you know, just for and what sort of um, development work do you do with your staff to make sure that they then all respond really well in that way? Take this <laughs> to, really, just with the, the learner voice, it's very much about making sure that everybody feels that they can have a say, and that works exactly the same with our staff that work for us as well. So ultimately, they can bring feedback back into the business as well as the learners bring it back in, and making sure everyone's aware they can speak to and then also what the changes are so it's just really kind for people to be active listeners okay and so you're saying that that i don't want to put words in your mouth but that kind of having the learner voice activity from apprentices that that's key to equality and diversity working well for people yes. in yes, apprentices yeah. and for staff doing the same yeah, exactly the same is because if we could be improvements ultimately sometimes we don't know what goes on in the workforce so ultimately by bringing the learners in and being able to listen to them it helps us to make sure that our policies are right and then we can then enforce that with the and have you got some examples of where i'm really putting you on the spot here now <laughs> have you got some examples of where you've made changes or where you've kind of learned you know apprentices have brought things back and you have changed something yeah i think with documentation and um, things like our learner handbooks our employer handbooks again we've just revisited them by getting feedback from everybody to make sure that we've got the right information in there to help support parents carers employers to go to the right people really. so they're just some examples of those have changed recently and are any of you um, in workplaces where you've also got people doing the new traineeships as well on work placement? Okay. No, nobody. Well, that'll be the next thing to come along, won't it? To 
and see how you kind of support those. So good luck with that. Let us know how you get on with that one. Okay, thank you all very much indeed. Really nice to meet you. And um, we'll be posting it on the website on Equalities Toolkit. I'll, I'll email You'll send the link, now. will you? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.